I was right. I was right. I was right. I'm not right all the time, but it is awesome when I am, unless I happen to be wrong, right? I mean, we're kind of going off what we saw. It could be that like in episode number eight, Agatha's like, this is not the dark hold, it's the light hold. It's like the dark hold, but less evil. I don't, I don't know if that's really what she's gonna do. <laughs> but I have a very, very, very strong feeling that it is. But the question is, what does it mean, right? It's one thing to see it. It's another to see the revelation from episode number seven that Agatha Harkness is basically the one behind everything. But what does it mean, right? Because the big question to kind of ask here is like, what does Agatha Harkness gain from this, right? Now, in reality, I think episode number seven just gave us the plot to Doctor Strange 2. I think it just basically told us everything that's gonna happen. So one of the big things to kind of go on here, let's 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 sort of, let's, let's talk about the Doctor Strange 2 portion, right? Let's talk about Doctor Strange 2 portion portion for a second. So the big thing that people are taking away from this or, or looking at Doctor Strange 2 on is they're saying like Nightmare Mephisto is going to be the main villain and stuff like that. I've combed through like all the confirmed castings. I've combed through probably two or three dozen news articles and I have not seen anything that's confirmed Mephisto or Nightmare for Doctor Strange 2. And so because of that, I kind of look at this and I'm like, all right, so what if the main villain really is Wanda? Like what if she really is the bad guy here? WandaVision ends and she goes on to be the main villain in Doctor Strange 2. Now, what does that mean? Why does this have anything to do with anything? Okay, cool. So here's what I think is going on, right? Let's start with Agatha. Let's start with Agatha Harkness, the big revelation, the fact that she's the bad guy here. Why is she the bad guy? Well, there's a couple different ways we can go with this. We can say that she really is just a dick, right? She's just, she's just a terrible person. And that's really all it is. Like she's always been bad, right? She was alive during the Salem witch trials and she was actually a witch and they were going to burn her at the stake. And maybe she used her magic to escape or something like that. Or we could say that she was just a person who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. That when she was talking to Vision, for example, that she wandered down the wrong street. Now, that kind of doesn't really seem to hold up because we saw in like her own little intro, which was awesome, by the way, she got her own theme music when it was revealed that she was a bad guy, that she was basically playing Vision, right? She wasn't actually under Wanda's spell. And I think it's safe to believe she's never been under Wanda's spell. She's never been controlled by Wanda. She's just been playing the part so that Wanda and us don't really know what's going on. But we could say that like, she's a person who's a bad guy and she made a bargain with like Cthone or somebody like that. Now we may never see them or it could just be she fell under the influence of the Darkhold. But by whatever manner and whatever means, Agatha became a bad guy. And she's basically just been a bad guy ever since, manipulating events, doing all kinds of really crappy and crazy things. But how does this tie into Wanda? Why would Wanda be somebody sought after by Agatha? What could her grand plan be? You kind of have to expect there to be one. You have to expect there to be some kind of a plan in a situation like this, when you have somebody like Wanda who has all these kind of crazy and, and wonky powers. And when you look at the show in its entirety and you look at all the things that Agatha said, there's stuff that Wanda can do that Agatha didn't even know she could do, right? Like for example, when the kids were asking her to like bring the dog back and Wanda's like I can't resurrect the dead I think it was legitimate when Agatha was like you can do that like you can resurrect the dead and Wanda was like no I, I can't do that I think that was a legitimate reaction like damn I knew you were powerful I didn't know you were that powerful right I think it was like that but I think it was an, an actual true statement on behalf of Agatha really genuinely totally oblivious to the fact that Wanda could potentially resurrect the dead. When you look at like Pietro being there, right? I don't think Agatha brought Pietro back and I don't think he's an illusion she created. I think Wanda did it. I think Wanda brought back Pietro. I think Agatha guided Pietro to Wanda's house, but I think Wanda actually resurrected him from the dead. Wanda, I think is just absurdly powerful. Now, here's the thing that I, I, I think is kind of going on here. I think Agatha is legitimately a bad guy. Agatha's just been doing bad things. And in the aftermath of Age of Ultron or the aftermath of Infinity War or Avengers in game or whatever, Agatha became aware of Wanda and maybe she wanted to turn her into like her prize pupil that could help her do evil things or something like that. Doesn't really matter what it is. The result of this is that Agatha brought Wanda under her spell and that's what led to Wanda stealing the body of Vision and that's what led to Wanda creating this little reality or something like that. Maybe it's Agatha testing her to see how powerful she is. But I think what's gonna happen is Agatha's gonna realize she bit off more than she can chew because I think one of the big revelations that's gonna come out of this is that Wanda's kids were never real, that Agatha created them, right? Agatha created them as an illusion for Wanda or prodded Wanda into doing it. Now, I know a lot of people will point to the idea of, no, 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 it's gotta be the events of the comics where they're pieces of Mephisto's soul. But it's like I was talking about in a previous video. Even for a comic book film, that kind of stretches the limits of credulity. Even for a comic book concept, it's a little far-fetched to put into a movie. And so if we bring it back to reality, make it a little more tangible, and we say, okay, like Agatha created Wanda's kids, then the revelation that's going to come out of this is Wanda's going to find out they're not real. And she's going to find out that Agatha's the one that's been controlling all this, that this whole world that Wanda lives in is all just done at the manipulations of Agnes and Wanda's going to lose it. She's going to absolutely freak out. And when she does, she's going to go Dark Phoenix, right? That's basically what's going to happen. Right? For those of you guys who don't know what that means, Dark Phoenix Saga, Marvel Comics, right? This is why I say Wanda in the Marvel 
Marvel Cinematic Universe is basically Jean Grey from the comics, and she has been for a long, long time. Okay, so the Phoenix Force in the comics represents the sum total of all life that has ever, currently does, and will ever exist. At some point along the line, it became aware of Jean Grey's existence and said, hey, she's a perfect host for me. I'm going to bond to her when she gets older. And it did. That was the Phoenix Saga. Now, what ended up happening is Jean Grey was ultimately manipulated by a guy named Jason Wingard, who had the ability to manipulate the five senses. But when you got to the end of what was essentially the Phoenix Saga, and it was believed by Jean Grey that Cyclops had died, she had a psychotic break. And the Phoenix Force totally took over. And it was experiencing all these crazy emotions, vengeance, rage, different things like that, and just went absolutely nuts and just became an evil Phoenix. And I feel, I feel like that's basically what's going to happen with Wanda, right? That Wanda really does have a ton of power, right? When her, her abilities were activated, quote unquote, by the Mind Stone or the Space Stone or whatever it was, the Tesseract during uh, Age of Ultron by Baron Von Strucker when we were first introduced to her in Quicksilver, that on the surface, it looked like all it activated was her telepathy and telekinesis. What it did activate was so much more because you're talking about matter manipulation. For you guys who don't know, in Marvel Comics, the ability to manipulate matter on a universal level, which is to say creating planets or moving them around and things like that, it's like five steps away from telekinesis, right? At, at the end of the day, telekinesis is just moving objects with your mind. With enough training and assuming that the story needs to be told and Marvel wants to, to have it that way, they can take a character that can move trains with their mind and then like expand their abilities to the point where they're so fine-tuned, they can move like atoms and molecules with their mind. And so that's what you're talking about with Wanda, right? If Wanda's actual power is the ability to manipulate reality, but up to this point, it's only really surfaced as like telepathy and telekinesis. And this psychotic break she experiences at the hands of this revelation that Agatha's behind everything basically unlo unlocks all of her abilities. She just loses her mind and taps into her full potential. Then you're going to see something that basically goes into the, the Dark Phoenix saga territory where she basically becomes insane. She loses her mind. She goes nuts and becomes the villain. That leads into Doctor Strange 2. And you got Stephen Strange and Baron Mordo teaming up to try to take down Wanda Maximoff and basically just chasing her around the multiverse, right? So that's why you end up seeing Sam Raimi Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, like all these different characters from across the various comic book movies that have existed out there. I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of Doctor Strange 2, Wanda's defeated, but the price for her defeat comes in the form of like, quote unquote, the multiverse's destruction. And the only way to fix it is to condense it all down. And so like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Fox Universe, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man Universe, they all just get condensed down into one singular universe. And then what do you know? You got X-Men in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Done, just like that. So I feel like that's basically what's gonna happen going into like Doctor Strange 2 and all that kind of stuff. I feel like this 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 gave us huge answers, just enormous answers with everything that was going on in WandaVision. But again, at the end of the day, this is just a theory. <laughs> but if you guys wanna learn more about the Darkhold, I'm gonna have a video coming up on Comics Explained that will properly explain the Darkhold. I'll have that later on today. It'll just be Marvel Comics, the Darkhold Explained. So it's not up yet at the time this video is being released on YouTube, but it will be within a few hours. For those of you guys who are kind of coming over here from Comics Explained, yes, we are doing WandaVision. Yes, it is something similar to Comics Explained, but I'm trying to create a clear line here where Comics Explained only focuses on comics and nothing else. Pop Culture Explained focuses on everything else that's not necessarily related to comic books, but is not comic books per se, right? So like the WandaVision TV show, or maybe Falcon and the Winter Soldier, if the first episode's good. I have no idea. But nonetheless, thank you for watching, guys. If you want to see more about my Easter eggs and theories and all that kind of stuff on WandaVision, make sure you guys click this end screen, which will take you there. And make sure you guys also check out our videos on like Celebrities Explained and stuff like that. We don't want to just be WandaVision, right? We don't want to kill our channel when WandaVision ends. We want to have other stuff for you guys to see. So make sure you guys go check those things out and I will catch you all later. Peace.